In this special lesson, I'm going to explain why I believe the WTA forehand is better than the ATP forehand. I'll dive right into those details in a sec, but first, just in case you're not familiar with those two different styles of play and styles of hitting the ball, there's a tremendous amount of debate on the internet about which is better, which is stronger, which leads to better results, and I'm going to kind of go out on a limb here a little bit and tell you why I think it's the reverse of what a lot of people believe for a really specific reason. Let's go to the screen really quick and take a look at a couple examples. Here's an example of, and all three of these that we're gonna look at are from a back angle. This is Maria Sharapova. And from this back angle, what you can see here is separation between the back of her head and the edge of her racket. She's taking her racket back beyond the edge of her body. In other words, if we were to just draw a line straight down through the back of her dominant shoulder, her racket is breaking that plane and going back behind her a little bit. And you'll see ver different variations within this style. Some WTA players have a, a larger, uh, longer backswing than this, and others are a little bit more compact. But what they all kind of share in common is this style of take back with the racket coming back and breaking the, the back plane of the body. So that's her take back on this swing. If we move over to Victoria Azarenka on a forehand, we'll see a very similar pattern. This is a slightly different angle, so it's, it's not uh, apples to apples comparison, but you can see that if we were directly behind her and we drew that same line, her racket is breaking that, that plane. And this is as contrasted to Roger, we see him set up from a, directly behind him. If we were to draw that same line, just in line with his shoulder, you'd see that his racket stays on the front side of that line. The racket does not break that back plane of his body. Instead, it stays on the same side of his body, and that allows him to get into this lag position where his racket transitions from the butt cap facing to the left along the baseline, and then very aggressively transitioning to the butt cap pointing towards the ball so that he can pull the butt cap forwards and create a lot of of racket head speed. And so there's a huge debate online about which is better, which is stronger. And I'm here to tell you that it's, that's just an academic and in theory kind of debate. When it comes to the games of amateur athletes like myself and like 99.99% .99 of people that watch the videos here on the Essential Tennis YouTube channel or on Facebook or on Instagram, the reality is if I were to just be able to snap my fingers and instantly adopt the forehand of Sharapova or the forehand of Azarenka and be able to strike the ball as cleanly and as powerfully as either of them do, my game would get a tremendous instant boost because they both strike the ball way stronger, way more athletically than I do. And so whether or not the ATP style of keeping it uh, on the other side of the plane and transitioning to a more aggressive lag position, whether or not that's better, is a great conversation and discussion to have over a beer when we're talking about elite athlete versus elite athlete. But in my opinion, when we start applying that debate to amateur athletes, then we start getting way off base. And one reason why is stylistic types of play. Some players are more of a flat ball hitter and more of a driver of the ball and play uh, a little bit more aggressive from the baseline and have a little bit more narrow nar margin for error. Maybe because they grew up on courts like this, indoor, fast, hard courts. And so that's the style that they want to play. That type of person playing in that type of environment with that style of game doesn't make a whole lot of sense to spend a ton of time breaking down the, the intricacies of the lag and snap and creating a, a much, much heavier ball. Doesn't mean it can't be beneficial, but if you took it WTA style of forehand at a very high level and applied it to that player, he or she would instantly become a much stronger person, a much stronger player on the court and win a lot more matches against their normal opponents. And the other big thing that you need to keep in mind is levels of play. There's a tremendous gulf between us and the players that we're debating about. And a way to kind of keep that in perspective is understand that the difference between a middle of the road 4-5 player and the middle of a road 5-0 player is a 6-0, 6-0 match. It's a double bagel. You take that 5-0 player and put them against a 5-5 player 
and again, it's not even close. It's no contest. And then that 5-5 player to a 6-0 six, player and 6-0 player to 6-5 player, so on and so forth, there's layer upon layer upon layer. You take a, a number 200 ranked world-class player and put them against the number one ranked world-class player, and it's not even close. And so we sit back on the other side of our keyboard and computer screen, and, and we like to kind of debate the, the theories and kind of have an ac academic debate back and forth about which is better. And players are spending a lot of time going deep into extremely high-level mechanics and techniques, when the reality is, if they kept their more WTA-style forehand, like mine is more of a WTA style, versus Kevin's, which is more of a ATP style. I know that there are things that are much more beneficial to me than trying to completely change my style of striking the ball and try to mimic Federer and completely copy him. There's much more fundamental things that make a much bigger impact for me. So that's why you know, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of uh, controversy there in the title of this video, but I strongly believe that Either one, you take a world-class WTA or world-class ATP style swing and you just copy the fundamentals of either one and they're both the ones that we should be looking at. And really it's more a matter of style than it is which one is, is better, world-class versus world-class athlete.